Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. You know, just as the facets of a cut diamond uh, flash with exquisite colors in the bright sunlight, the scriptures illuminate what we have to do to be a good Christian. No, they illuminate Jesus Christ. I'm going to take a slight departure. I hope you don't mind from our ongoing studies in the epistle to the Romans. Even though many of the verses that I bring to bear in this discussion will be from Romans, to talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart. I want to talk about something that you may, many of you may believe that from watching all of the videos that I've produced the past several years, I believe that I, I, I'm sort of leaning this direction. I'm, I'm sure many of you are aware of the fact I'm big on grace. I'm not uh, of any size at all on law. Law keeping as a rule of life. I've tried to emphasize the fact that I, I believe the law is just as the Bible says. It's righteous, it's holy, it's good. But Christ is the fulfillment of the law. And we now have Christ living in us. In us. The very fulfillment of the law. And Scripture talks about this person, Jesus Christ, living his life in and through us. The very fulfillment of the law. Okay, I don't think I ever did this before in a video. Through us, in and through us, the fulfillment of the law. Therefore, the righteous, the, the law is not made for a righteous man, and that is what we are. We began on the basis of being fully righteous, just as fully righteous as God's Son, because He made us that way. He made us righteous. When the Father looks at us, He sees us as righteous as His Son. Did you know that? If you follow these videos for any length of time, you might have heard me talk about this. But we haven't spent a whole lot of time talking about just how does that happen. It's the righteousness that's based on faith. And what I want to show you here in this video, and I'm sorry to disappoint some of you that who wanted the Romans to continue on after we got through filming our last segment of the Rapture movie. Uh, it's just something that the Lord has laid on my heart to talk about. And so I want to begin by showing you a number of slides here. So bear with me as we go through this because I, I hope that this all kind of falls into place for you. Well, that's my prayer. I want to start out by looking at a, a, a single verse, 2 Corinthians 10.5. 10.5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, of Christ, not to Christ, of Christ. Now, if you just back up just a little bit in, in this text, what you'll see Paul talking about is... Uh, as if we walked according to the flesh. Well, that's law. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that is fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And I believe law keeping as a rule of life is is very much connected to those imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, that's kind of the jump off point. That's the springboard uh, slide that I wanted to use as I began this. Now, I went through uh, and I've done this before, but I did this for y'all's sake. I went through all of the, a number of the most prominent translations out there. And what you see is you see in red, and I've marked it in red here, to Christ. 
to Christ, to Christ, to Christ, to Christ, and then of Christ, the Berean, got it right, of Christ. Now here on this next slide, I did make a few errors here. The red, I, I put under the word to, it's, it's actually of Christ. You'll notice the New American Standard is, it should be marked in blue. King James is also obedience of Christ. That should be marked in blue. Okay. Uh, I think the Christian Standard Bible uh, got it wrong. Uh, as well as did the rest uh, on this slide here. It's all about uh, obeying Christ in the sense of of doing, law keeping. You know, that's at least that's the the, the connotation that, that is the uh, I don't know what word to use here that's the the inference that's the inference is it leads the believer the the phrase to Christ obedience to Christ leads the believer leads the Christian with leaves the Christian with the false impression the wrong impression that we are to do what scripture says that we live under law now that's that's a very vital, very important distinction to make here, folks. If we go on down and, and look at the rest of these uh, translations, what you'll see is you'll see a number of them uh, continue on to use the word to Christ, whereas some actually get it right, and they translate it the obedience of Christ or of the Messiah. And so I went on down through this list, and and there's uh, there's actually really more if you really uh, count through the major translations, the most prominent translations. More of them say of Christ than to Christ. Yet most Christians that I meet today, if they are familiar with Second Corinthians ten five, they will refer to it as the obedience to Christ. Obedience to Christ. Now, the uh, original text here, I'm throwing up the original Greek on the screen of 2 Corinthians 10, 5. You can see that from the original text, it's obedience of Christ. In fact, I've got a blue arrow pointing to the genitive to show you that it, it is Christ's obedience. It belongs to Him. The genitive of possession. Obedience of Christ. Christ's obedience. We take captive every thought into, that's ice, into the obedience of Christ. And it's talking about our walk. It's talking about sanctification. We're not looking at justification. We're not looking at being born again. We're not looking at redemption. We're looking at ongoing uh, deliverance from sin, self, the law, Satan, the world, and death, and so on and so forth. Actually, I shouldn't say so on and so forth. The six things I named are are the entire list. Sin, self, the law, the world, Satan, and death. Those are the things that we have died to. Those are the things that we're being delivered from. And we're being delivered on the basis of faith, not law. So as it concerns the matter of your walk, your relationship with Christ, your ongoing daily communion and fellowship and walk with Christ, it's one of grace, not law. It's one of faith, not law. We see the same thing pointed out in Galatians 2, where Paul says, that, Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of, there it is again, the genitive, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And that verse 23, folks, if you just stop and meditate on what that verse is saying, frustrating the grace of God, there is no other way that you could frustrate the grace of God in your life other than walking according to the flesh walking according to law law keeping as a rule of life where that it is not i but christ but it is it is you paul says not i but christ it's the i that was crucified with christ so you, we frustrate the grace of god when we, we bring i into it when, when we bring ourselves into the equation 
For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. We have no need for Christ. If it's all about living our lives, walking according to the flesh, trying to be the best we can, trying to live the Christian life uh, on the basis of self-performance and through self-effort uh, and self-means, we don't need Christ. That's what Paul is saying. Now, folks, this flies contrary to what modern Christianity as a whole preaches. It is not the message that they preach. In this next slide, we see going back all the way back to Romans 1.17, where Paul says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just, that is the righteous, same word in the Greek, the just shall live by faith. That's how we live. And I've often pointed out that, that what God desires most of us is that we trust Him. That is what He desires the most from us. And you're going to see that later on as we go through this. Philippians 3 9, Paul said, and, and be found in Him. And, and bear in mind, Paul was already born again. Be found in him not having my own righteousness, that is experiential righteousness on the human level, experiential righteousness post-Calvary, post-conversion. This is after his Damascus Road uh, conversion. Be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of law. The word the is not there. You'll note it's in parentheses. Translators added that. It's not the word the is not there. It's just of law. That's any principle whereby righteousness is believed to be attained or maintained on the human level. But that through faith from Christ, and, and the word from Christ there, I've got, I've got another arrow with a genitive pointing to this. You, you'll note the genitive. It's the letter G, the capital G, in the sequence down below. N G M S. This this describes the grammar. It's another genitive. It's Christ's faith. The out of God righteousness. That's interesting. Ek is the word of. Is ek out of God righteousness on the basis of what law? No. On the basis of faith. Second Corinthians ten. Now this is one. Uh, I probably shouldn't have put this slide in here because uh, I actually counted uh, obedience to Christ 14 times, obedience of Christ 14 times, but then I went on and, and counted further, and there were actually uh, more t more references, more translations said obedience of than, than said obedience to. So the question being, does the reference obedience of Christ refer to justification, sanctification, or both? And the truth is, well, it's well, it's the believer that's being addressed. Every thought captive, that's every thought captive, okay? That's from beginning to end, every thought captive from the time you're born again to the time you go and stand before the Lord. So it has to be both. The contexts reveal it to be both. As if we walked according to the flesh. Well, walk is a term that's used in relationship to our post-conversion experience, our ongoing walk and fellowship and communion with the Lord. As if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now, in, in the, that tenth chapter of Second Corinthians, you see these phrases used by Paul. We do not war after the flesh. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? Again, I mean, it's just, you can't help folks but read this stuff and see that what is being preached against is the self-righteousness of the flesh in its relationship with Christ, walking according to law, judging outwardly, warring against the flesh, comparing ourselves with some that commend themselves, and so on and so forth. And boasting, where it says, We will not boast of things without our measure or beyond our measure, but he that glorieth, let him glory in what? Self? No. Let him glory in the Lord. These are the phrases that, that you'll find in that, in that passage where 
uh, that verse 5 is found, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. This took me all the way back to Romans 8 as I was refreshing my mind on it all, where there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. This is repeated all the way through Scripture, folks. And it amazes me how the people can miss this. For the law of the or the principle of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So it's another principle. It's the principle of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, the flesh cannot keep the law. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, that that's, should be our desire, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It's. I, I wish I had a better way of explaining this, folks. I really do. It's, it's kind of like one of these... There's a... I don't know if the right word is dichotomy. Uh, I, I don't know. The, the, uh, it's a paradox of sorts. It's where that the way up is down. It's it's where that we, the law is fulfilled in us when we don't try to fulfill the law. I, I don't know if, if if I should put it that way, but that's that's exactly what the text is saying. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's where their attention. That's where their focus is. It's not on Christ. It's on self. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. I want to stop right here and just just and just throw this out there. Uh, th there is a reason, folks, why, why people who are under grace, living, walking according to the Spirit, looking at Christ, setting their affections on Christ, on things above, not on things below. That's the, the law, the flesh, sin, and, and all that sort of thing. There's a reason why Christians are so zealous and so enthusiastic and so excited and they, they just they can't hardly put their Bible down as compared to those who well they just find it somewhat of a, of a boring chore to even pick it up and get into it why? why? because law is all they know it's it it, it's just it's almost a natural tendency to reject something that's going to place you in in what you feel is a box or place you under the heavy yoke of some burden and that's what law does all the law does is condemn if you go on down and I'm not going to bother reading it but if you go on down and read reread Romans 8 you'll see that this ties directly into everything that we're talking about here 2 Corinthians 4.11 For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Okay? What is that death? That's death to self. Death to self. Crucified with Christ. Where that the old man, the sin nature, is held inoperative. Not just the old man in the sense of it going off doing things that you know better than to do, but but folks, I I need not remind you that the sinful flesh, the old man, the sin nature can be very much involved in Christian activity. Are you listening to me? It's it's just a matter it's a matter of motive. It's going about it the wrong way. If if you're living to to be walking according to the flesh is be, is is. Is, is to be walking in such a way as to where you are trying to please God based upon you're hoping God will accept you based upon your performance and that is wrong that's wrong yet that's 90% 90 plus percent of Christianity today so we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus sake we're, we're being pulled away from that in, in remembrance to our, our having died with Christ, been crucified with Christ, where it's, it's not I, as Paul says, but Christ. 2 Corinthians 4.11 for, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. It's Christ manifest. We, we tend to look at him as just some sort of, uh, well, he's, he's this really... And I don't know how to put it. 
most Christians, I think, perceive Christ as being just really someone who's just really not all that present. He's off somewhere else. He's. I think they forget the fact that he's even living inside them. If he's if he's living inside us, don't, don't you think that he can live his life in and through us? Live, you know, his life. At, his life can be expressed outwardly through us. I mean, because that is the the picture that the Bible paints of this process. Crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Another genitive there. This always reminds me of John 6, 2, 9. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. This is the work of God. God's work. That ye believe on him whom he hath sent. And that is not just referring to new birth or redemption or regeneration. That is referring to our entire existence within the sphere of Christianity, in our relationship with Him, our fellowship with Him, our communion with Him. That's the sphere in which we live. It is the work of God that we believe on Him whom He has sent. There's nothing that God desires most of us than that we trust Him. But we have this treasure, says Paul, in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of our best efforts. No, may be of God and not of us. Not of us, folks. Not of us. Second Corinthians 4, 7. And yet Christian after Christian after Christian will say, Steve, you're just preaching this grace that's just, it's careless living. Grace just, just leads to careless living. It's, it's sloppy grace. That is absolutely an insult to the finished work of Christ. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. This is what the Word t says. It's what it teaches us. This is the instruction that we are to receive. This is the, the life, the, the walk, the relationship that Christ is presenting us, or the Holy Spirit is presenting us in glorifying Christ in our lives. Not glorifying self. The Holy Spirit never had one good thing to say about self. Never had one good good thing to say about the word I, you know, or self, you know, or, or human effort. Well, you know, man, this, this one over here, he's really trying, and man, i got to really commend him. You'll never hear the Holy Spirit talk in those terms. His, his whole ministry is glorifying Christ. It is all about the faithfulness of God in our lives, folks. The faithfulness. The righteous man shall live by the faithfulness of God. There's where the peace is that surpasses understanding. There's where the joy is, the rest. There's where, there's where everything is that you're looking for to be content in your walk and in your relationship with Christ. It's all about trusting in Him and not yourself. The more you trust in yourself... Listen to me. The more that you trust in yourself, the further away from Christ you get. And God allows that. God allows that in a believer's life so that he comes to the point to where that self-dependence ends and Christ-dependence begins. Romans 9.30 What then will we say that the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith? Romans 10.4 Christ is the end of the law to bring righteousness to everyone who believes. The end of the law. Christ is the end of the law. Why? Because He is the very fulfillment of the law and He lives inside you. You have, you have living within you the very embodiment of the law. And it is the work of God that the work of God is connected to that. It's and the righteousness of God is connected to the, to that. The life of Jesus Christ is all connected to that. It's th these are deeply spiritual things, folks. They're not they're not deep in the sense that they're hard to comprehend or hard to understand. There is a simplicity to all of this, and that is it is Christ, not us. It's Christ, not you. 
your focus has, must be on Christ, not self. Ephesians 3.12, and I'm looking at the original text here, in whom we have boldness and access and confidence. Well, you know, that's the law's not going to give you that, folks. By the faith of him. Again, that's a genitive. The faith of him, his faithfulness, that is because he is faithful. And so we are to stand fast, says Galatians 5.1. Therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has, hath made us free, and be not again uh, uh, entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's law. That's law. So we have liberty and freedom contrasted with the yoke of bondage, which is law. It's just a matter of connecting the dots here, folks. And there's so many verses that can do this. You can go, you can go all kinds of ways to present what I'm I'm presenting you here. So we stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. We don't become entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Why? Why? Because Christ is the end, and I'm I'm reading here from the original text. End. For end of law, the word the is in parentheses, it's not there in the original text. For end of law, Christ, is what it literally says. Into righteousness to everyone believing. Everyone. Not just some of us. Everyone. What you find out, folks, when you go down this path is you find out, to your amazement, that there is a golden thread woven all throughout Scripture, and that golden thread is Jesus Christ. I love you all. I truly do. Until next time, thanks for watching.